So uh, tonight is Randy Savage versus Yokozuna with Randy Savage's chance to shake up WrestleMania, win the title tonight, and then he would be the one to go on to defend against Lex Luger and Bret Hart. And what a fun alternate universe that would have been, by the way. So it's Randy Savage versus Yokozuna. Well, you see, he felt Randy was too old. Right. Here in 1994. He was too old. Yeah. Mm. But, you know, uh, whatever. So Harvey Whippleman is our guest commentator this week. We've we've scraped the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> There's was, like nobody else that could do commentary. He was fine. He I was mean, he was after fine, Bastion Booger. But, I mean, he was better than Bastion Booger. I guess. Probably I mean, better than Bastion. Actually, had, there's several guys he's better than. Bastion had a couple of lines that at least were sort of funny. I mean, no. What did what did this guy bring to the table? <laughs> Nothing against him or anything like he that. Was a, but. It, he was a generic pro wrestling heel manager, which is what he always was. Yeah. Talk about the voice not matching the man, though. That's I actually thought it was DiBiase at first. Yeah, yeah someone's like, this is I didn't not... think it was TBS. Yeah, I thought it was somebody else, but I can't remember who I thought it was. Yeah. And then I went, wait a second, is that Bruno? Downtown Bruno? Downtown Bruno, Bruno yes. Yeah. What a great name. He should have feuded with Uptown Bruno, who had all of the, the superstars. You know what I mean? So Randy Savage and Yokozuna had a great match. Did they ever? What chemistry they had. It wasn't even chemistry. It was just, you had a guy who was great at beating the shit out of people, and you had another guy that was just great at selling. But the, the, their mean, timing on, on when, because this is not, we've seen a thousand Randy Savage matches and 900 of them are the same. He sells the entire time, does one move and wins. And he wasn't winning here, but he hit his move at the end. This was different. They went back and forth constantly. Uh, it, it, it was a seesaw matchup back and forth, as James Man likes to say. Yokozuna was actually bumping his, relatively speaking, bumping his ass off for this guy. Took the three, you know, three big clotheslines, goes down to the third one, and Yoko didn't bump for everybody, but it's the Macho Man. Uh, Yoko kept uh, getting, he, he had Savage down. He never, never tried the bonsai drop, so the bonsai drop, bonsai drop was never countered. But he tried the leg drop, he tried a big splash, tried an elbow smash, and Savage always moved because he didn't want to die under the massive weight of this huge man. Uh, Cornet does not come out at first, but then when Fuji is knocked off the apron, Cornet comes out anyway. So I don't even know what the point of that was. Uh, we get Yokozuna outside for a while, and Savage just trying and failing to roll him back in because he can't win the title on a countout. We have the Salt Bucket gets involved, but in fact, Savage is the one who hits it and gets a near fall off of that. He hits his Salt Bucket shot, and then he goes down. And Vince is losing his mind. Oh, my God. Randy, just turn over, Randy. Randy's going to be the next champion if he can just turn over. And he's marking out to the point, I thought, you know you write this shit, right? Why don't you just make this guy the champion? But, in fact, Randy did not turn no, over fast no, enough. No, no. And Yoko kicked out. So, for the salt bucket, by the way, Jim Cornette had to distract the referee. And the last time we saw Jim Cornette try to do this was in the Heavenly Bodies match against the Rockwell Express Survivor Series. And uh, Cornette has done interviews talking about how he was literally trying as hard as he could to distract Joey Morella at that show, and Joey Morella would not be distracted. Cornette was not messing around this time. I forget who this referee was, but Cornet literally grabbed him and put him in a headlock. Mm -hmm. And said, look this way. Don't look back in the ring. Look at all these fans over here. So that's the for the bucket. And then in the end, Savage does hit the big elbow. But we will never know if Yokozuna might have kicked out because Crush attacks for the disqualification. Mm. You know, I was watching this and uh, I, I forgot, you know, who won or whatever. I mean, I knew Yokozuna won, but I don't remember how. how uh, or I knew that Yokozuna did not lose a title. That's all I remember. Because obviously he goes to WrestleMania. So, uh, and I, I, I just going in thought, okay, Randy's a commentator and we're trying to set up WrestleMania. So, like, Yokozuna is going to, like, bonsai him, pin him clean in the middle of the ring. That's what I thought was going to happen. Because I thought, wh why would you, my, my, initial, my, my initial thought was, why would you do anything other than that? Because you want Yokozuna strong. Going into WrestleMania, that's my 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 brain thinking what I guess it should think or whatever. But anyway, so I watched this, and fucking Randy Savage hits the flying elbow. He has the match won, and Crush runs in for the disqualification, and he saves Yokozuna's title, which is literally the exact opposite of keeping a guy strong, keeping the champion strong. Yep. Going into WrestleMania. But then I thought about it, and uh, and I liked it a lot. Because, you know, we've seen this many times in wrestling, and you just don't think about it a lot. But 
sometimes the fans want to buy their ticket and know that they're going to see the babyface win. That's why you you do certain stipulations, you know, and uh, you know that you you do the stipulation, and the fans hear the stipulation, and they know that their guy is going to win. And going into this WrestleMania, where you have this little mini tournament, and you've got you know Luger versus Yokozuna, Brett versus Owen. Brett then faces the winner of Luger and Yokozuna. You know whether you like Brett or you like Luger. In a way, you kind of want to know that one of your guys is winning. So I actually liked what they did here. I liked it that they showed that Yokozuna could be beaten by somebody that wasn't even in WrestleMania because, you know, as a ticket buyer, you know, now you're thinking, man, I buy that WrestleMania, I'm going to see a new champion. Maybe it's going to be Lex. Maybe it's going to be Brett. But, like, there's no way Yokozuna's going to get through both of them. That's like a selling point, not the opposite. That's something that makes you want to buy the show. So I liked the finish here. I thought it was a great match. You know, Yoko, Vinny, you touched on it briefly about Yoko's bumping. Uh, some big men don't like to bump. Well, none of them like to, but... Case in point, me. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> nobody likes to bump. Um, but Yoko uh, getting knocked out of the ring just threw himself out of the ring. Yeah. And, uh, man, he's he was a good big man. Also, Jim Cornette. I know he's kind of a jerk, but he was amazing in this. He just well, he was a great manager. He was a great right. talker. I mean, not get taking that away from him. He got he got pushed, and he stumbled and tripped and tripped over the steps and grabbed his heart and took a bump. He's fantastic. He's a highlight of this match for me. At the very, very end of this match, right before they went to commercial and everyone had already run out, like Bret Hart and Lex Luger, and they're all beating each other up, uh, Vince McMahon uh, yells, he screams something, and I'm paraphrasing here, that uh, Randy Savage has been screwed like Nancy Kerrigan did against Oksana Bayul. You did say this, yes. <laughs> God. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things back then is Vince was always bringing, like, contemporary news notes into his commentary. And I don't know what year that changed, but, you know, nowadays, I mean, they just keep bringing up shit from the 90s. Like, at some point in the 90s, he just stopped watching the news or something like that. But uh, here it was all got Nancy Kerrigan, and he'd be talking about elections, and he'd be talking about this and that. Yeah, Nancy Kerrigan. So the post-match is interesting because Yokozuna and Crush are beating down Savage. The crowd begins to chant for Lex Luger. Mm -hmm. They get Bret Hart instead, and they're happy about this. But then Bret gets his ass kicked, yeah. and Lex has to come help Bret. And together they work at, together to uh, clean the ring and make the save. I thought that was very clever. It's, Bret got beat down, but only Lex was able to take down Yoko and the crew. Yeah. It is, it, the, the way this whole thing is going, because I'm assuming at this point they knew what they were doing in Mania. And how it's oh, yeah. going to come around. So they needed, the, the like Brian says, they wanted the crowd to think Lex was going to beat Yoko. And they did everything they could to make you think Lex was the guy. And in fact, at the end of this, you'd be convinced Lex was going to be come out of Mania Champion. He's going to beat both guys. Well, I'm sure next week they're going to do the exact opposite. They might. And uh, you're going to think for sure Brett's going to come out. But what they wanted was for you to think it's either Brett or Lex. They did not want you thinking, ah, oh, man, they're both going to lose to Yoko. They wanted, they wanted yes. you to pay your money and get a winner, a babyface winner. Of course. Here is some actual commentary from Bash and Burger. I love barbecue. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> During this match, uh, I believe uh, Bastion was uh, choking on his chicken wings. Bastion said, uh, Vince, you haven't lived up to your contract. I uh, require four or five pizzas delivered in a wheelbarrow. It was at this point that Bastion Burger demanded hot dogs. Were they delivered it? in a wheelbarrow, too? Yeah. That's a big hot dog. We're told Razor and Janetti have called... It's a big wiener. <laughs> yes, Brian. Big, juicy wiener. Yes, in between two buns. <laughs> oh, you broke Vinny. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, 
the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.